Hello students, Dr. Dia here with yet another philosophy appetizer. And this one is more of a story that I'll tell you. Sorry, no graphics, no PowerPoint, nothing like that. Just a story from something that happened to me many years ago. It was about the month of January or so, and my son, who was probably about 10 years old at the time, 11, I'm, I'm not sure, and I were going up to a camp. It was uh, an event organized by our, by our church for, you know, dads to go with their sons and spend a weekend camping with a bunch of other guys out there, you know, parents and their sons. And uh, we took off on a Friday afternoon, late afternoon. It was up to uh, up towards the Big Bear area. And uh, of course, we drove up the road. And I don't know if you're familiar with the road, but at some point it starts climbing up and it narrows down to uh, one lane each way. And no sooner had we started climbing, and it was already, you know, late in the afternoon, probably almost early evening. And of course, it was dark already because it was winter time. A dense fog basically came in and covered and wrapped us up. And so you couldn't see hardly anything. So everybody turned on their lights and uh, I couldn't see more than six feet ahead of me. So what I did was, of course, I tailgated the car in front of me just essentially following, you know, the red you know, rear lights uh, up the road as we, you know, kind of like went around. And uh, so I figured, okay, I can make it. I'll have to figure out where my exit is and where do I get off and stuff like that. When suddenly after one turn on the road, the driver in front of me pulled over and decided not to go anymore. <laughs> okay, so I said, well, I'll follow the one in front. Guess what? There was nobody in front. So I happened to look down my rear view mirror and saw a stream, a train of, you know, headlights, about 20 of them. And guess who was in front of the whole line? This guy. So now I had to be the lead guy. Like I said, I couldn't see more than six feet ahead of me. Uh, so what I did was uh, grab the steering wheel really hard. I think my son was probably asleep. He didn't know this was happening anyway. And I fixed my eyes on the center divider line. Now, I knew if I go too far to the right, I could fall in a ditch there. I go too far to the left, I might get hit by an oncoming car or something who doesn't see me till the last moment, especially on the curves there. Uh, so I kept on going that, inching my way up that highway, following that center line, uh, thinking, uh, well, how am I going to know where the turn is for the camp? So after one of the turns on the road, had a little bit of a stretch where it looked like it's going to be straight up. And almost at the top of that little uh, slope there, I saw in the fog, reflected in the fog, two big uh, headlights from a car and the silhouette of a man essentially going kind of like that and pointing towards his right. And as I approached, it hit me. Gosh, that must be where we turn. And that must be the organizer of the camp who's posted out here to tell us where to go, right? So I kept on slowly going up there. And of course, when I got there, I turned left. I could barely make out, you know, from his sweat, but of course, from his glasses and his hat and the car, I could tell, yeah, that's him. That's, that's Scott. So anyway, I got off and went down the road. And of course, the camp was a little bit down. So as soon as I had gone down a few yards down the ramp there, the fog was gone. It was all kind of above me. So it's almost like that fog was just sitting there just for me. <laughs> and maybe so I could tell you this story. But anyway, uh, I've always had a habit of making, you know, drawing great principles out of simple stories. And that may be like a simple story, of course, for you. but. Here's what I learned. You know, sometimes things in your life are confusing, are uncertain, things are out of place, things are not happening the way you want them to, your expectations are not met, you're not exactly sure where you're going or what's going to happen, and uh, it's like you're driving in a dense fog. You kind of know where you want to get to, but you can't see ahead. You don't know what's going on around you. You don't understand the circumstances, the situation around you. It's very confusing. 
And like I said, it's like you're driving in a fog. And under those circumstances, all I can say is you got to follow that center line. And what I mean by that is you need to have something in your life that you can hold on to that keeps you on track towards your goals. Now, it's different things for different people. I'll tell you, for me, for my life, it has been faith. But of course, for some people, it's perhaps their own drive to reach, to reach their goals. For some people, it's just the love of, uh, you know, dear ones. For some people, it's just straight up stubbornness. Uh, for some people, it's more of a, hey, I just let myself get carried away and whatever. You know, it would be great if each one of us could always have something that centers us. That even when situations around our lives seem confusing and uncertain, we know that if we stick to that center line, we're going to arrive at our destination. And I believe that in life, when you are about to reach that turning point, that place where you need to go to, someone's going to be there to help you. Someone's going to be there in the middle of the fog saying, hey, this way, I'm here for you. Here, I'll help you out. And uh, I believe in that with all my heart. I've experienced it in my life. But please make sure that when you are undergoing, you know, circumstances that are uncertain, that make you feel like you're driving in the fog, make sure you have a center line, something that guides you, something to hold on to and stay on track. Don't give up. Don't pull over. Stay on track. You're going to get there. Thank you so much.